The official specs for Intel's 10th generation CPUs were just released, and while they seem to offer the best value Intel's had in years, you still shouldn't buy them. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Now before we go into the overall reasons as to why I don't believe you should buy any of these 10th generation CPUs from Intel, I am going to go over a couple of reasons why you actually might want to buy them. Now there are a few CPUs in the lineup that do look pretty good in terms of price to performance, and the one that stands out the most to me is the i7-10700KF. The reason why this processor looks pretty good is that it should be the strongest 8 core CPU on the market and it'll come in at a price of just over $350 hopefully, and at that price it's actually pretty competitive. Now when you compare that to the R73800X, which I believe you can typically get for around $330, I could see some people who are really into gaming, you know, spending that extra $20 on the processor and then let's say another $20, $30 on a cooler just to make sure that they get that slightly better performance overall. And another reason that you might want to buy Intel 10th generation chips this time is that they will for sure be the best gaming processors on the market. Now it might only be by a small percentage, however if you are one of those few people, and I do mean few, who have say a 2080 Ti and play competitive games online with a 1080p 240Hz monitor or 360Hz monitor, well that extra say let maybe 10% could make the difference, especially if you're a professional esports player. If you're a professional esports player, there's no doubt about it, 10% could make or break your game, so you absolutely should invest in these processors. However, I think for around 90% of people who go out and buy processors, it doesn't make any sense to buy an Intel 10th generation CPU, and here's why. The first and most important reason would be that even though AMD has had PCIe 4.0 for a long time now, Intel has still yet again dropped the ball and will be releasing these processors with motherboards that support only up to PCIe 3.0. And while in practice this doesn't really make a difference right now, in the future if you're someone who's investing in a platform and you don't plan on upgrading every generation, this could make a big difference in say storage and way further in the future it could actually make a difference in graphics performance. So if you're someone who likes to invest in a motherboard and CPU and keep it for around five years, you wanna go out and buy a good eight core processor and hold on to it and just upgrade your graphics card, well, you could end up bottlenecking yourself in the future if you want to have really high-end graphics at 4K resolution and such. And of course, when it comes to storage, PCIe 4.0 devices will be the standard going forwards with platforms such as PS5 and PC, where on the PS5, for example, I believe their SSD will be capable of over five gigabytes per second. So if you do want to keep up with that type of performance, you're gonna need to invest in a platform that has PCIe 4. The next and second most important reason as to why you really shouldn't invest in an Intel 10th generation CPU right now would be that AMD's 4000 series of desktop processors should be only around four months away, and that just isn't a whole lot of time to wait for what should be at least a 15% performance increase per core. And now when you add that 15% performance on top of what they already have, not only will they extend their multi-core lead, especially at better price points, but they may also take the single core lead in gaming as well, as not only are they getting 15% at least more performance from what I've heard, but on top of that, they'll be moving from four core CCX designs to full eight core CCX designs. So their processors that have eight cores will be on a single die. And what that means is that there will be less latency going back and forth between them, of course, meaning that games should perform much better. The third reason I don't think that you should invest in Intel 10th generation would be that it seems like so far from what we know that they still won't be including coolers in the box, which of course means that the price is going to be higher if you're investing in Intel. Now I know a lot of people like myself like to go out and buy their own water coolers to get the absolute best performance out of any chip that they purchase so that they can continue to reuse that really awesome cooler. However, a lot of people like to go out and just buy the processor, stick it in, and forget about anything else. And frankly, the coolers that AMD includes inside the boxes of these AMD CPUs is actually pretty good and it does get the job done. Now, if you're into heavy overclocking, of course, there are going to be some compromises you're going to have to make with a free cooler. However, it does a pretty good job, and if you're keeping it at stock, there's no problem with these coolers whatsoever, and so it's just saving you extra money. The fourth reason you still shouldn't buy Intel would be that the AM4 socket for AMD is just absolutely amazing. 
Now, what do I mean by this? I mean that for AMD, when you go out and you buy an AM4 motherboard, whether it be B350, X370, X470, B450, X570, and who knows, maybe an upcoming X670, they are backwards and forwards compatible with tons and tons of chips. So that means if you think that you want to upgrade your chip at some point, you have a way bigger upgrade path ahead of you versus if you had bought an Intel chip. So for example, let's say you bought a really good B350 motherboard back in the day with an R3 1200, let's say. Well, if those VRMs are still up to the task, you could go ahead and swap out that quad core processor for a modern 16 core 3950X and get a massive lead in performance. And it seems like from what I've seen from the rumors that these new Ryzen 4000 chips will once again be compatible with the AM4 socket, meaning that you could go from a really old quad core processor from AMD all the way up to a 4950X 16 core CPU, which would just be an amazing increase in performance and you could choose any CPU in between. That's just something you don't get from Intel. From Intel, you usually have to buy a new motherboard every single year. And once again, that's gonna be the case as the Z370 and Z390 motherboards are not gonna be compatible with these new 10th generation chips. You're gonna have to invest in a new motherboard once again. The fifth reason would be that Intel processors tend to be a little more expensive. And there's other things that go along with that, such as the motherboard and the fact that you have to buy a cooler. And for that much more expensive price that you're paying, you're typically getting less cores. So the value just isn't as good. For example, you can take a 10 core 10900K, which should be coming at a better price of around $488. However, you have to consider that you can get a 3900X 12 core processor from AMD for around $430 on Newegg right now. And those prices are probably only going to continue to drop, making the better value option fairly obvious in my opinion, unless of course you're in that 10% of people that just absolutely needs that slightly better performance that Intel gets you in gaming right now. The sixth reason as to why you really shouldn't get an Intel 10th generation chip in my opinion would be that these chips are going to be insanely power hungry. The fact is, is that Intel is still on their 14 nanometer process and they should have moved on to 10 nanometer long ago. And what that means is that they are trying their hardest to squeeze more and more cores on a process that really isn't built to handle it at the clocks that they're aiming for. So this means that these chips are supposedly, from what I've heard, going to be reaching up to 300 watts on their all core clock speeds, which is absolutely insanely high. For example, my overclock 3900X typically does not go beyond 200 watts. So an overclock 10900K from Intel could be th over 300 watts, maybe even reaching into 400 watts of power. And when you're talking about 400 watts of power when overclocking, to get the best, most stable power to it, you might need more than just an eight core CPU pin to make sure that that power flow is as good and stable as you can get it to make sure that the overclock is more stable. And that means, who knows, you might have to invest in a new power supply. These are things that you don't really think about at the time, but as your room heats up, as the fans spin up, and as you have to start looking for more exotic cooling solutions and newer power supplies, that stuff really gets annoying, let me tell you. And the seventh and final reason is that, well, when you go to Intel, they really only offer up to 10 cores on the mainstream, whereas AMD offers up to 16 cores. So if you're someone who, looking forward, might get into video rendering and the such, 10 cores should be good enough, but why swing for 10 cores when you could get 12 or 16? To me, the massive core count and multi-threaded performance gain that AMD has over Intel is worth it. In my opinion, in the long run, having more cores is going to be more beneficial. This is always how it's turned out in the past. So unless you're someone who likes to upgrade really frequently, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to invest in a platform that caps out at a lower core count. You're going to be thankful in the long run if you're someone who holds on to your motherboard for a long time that you did invest into the AMD ecosystem because you have a much better upgrade path ahead of you. But that's all I got for this one. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you think that it actually is worth going Intel this time? Are you going to be getting a 10700 KF? Are you going to be getting Ryzen 4000? And do you think that these points are valid or not? I'd really like to know what you think, so be sure to let me know and I'll get back to as many of you as I can. But that's all I got, so I'll see you in the next one. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. 
Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.